last days of October, especially when accompanied with cool temperatures, bring some of the season's best opportunities to tag a mature buck. Bucks are spending more time in the mornings cruising, checking scrapes, and surveying bedding areas. In the afternoons, they head toward feeding areas where does congregate. Though daylight activity levels are racing toward their peak, the likelihood of catching a buck near his home is actually starting to drop. On the evening of October 29th, Mike Reed makes the move back to the home farm with hopes of seeing chubs. This afternoon of Friday, October 29th, Ryan and I are set up on the home farm. We are hunting uh, this creek bottom that we've hunted once before. We had a nice sit a couple weeks back. We basically slip up through the hay field and then just drop down with the north wind blowing back towards the hay and I can set up on this ridge and overlook this creek bottom. It connects up, you can barely see my bean field over there, which goes up to the cherry tree. So this is a this big draw that I think Chubb is bedding in sometimes. He was here on this camera down maybe 100, 100 yards or so. He was here two nights ago uh, with some legal shooting light left. And the other two out of three nights, he's been coming out of the other bowl one time in the alfalfa, one time in the turnip plot. So he's been active three nights in a row with legal shooting light left. So um, I'm just gonna get a little more aggressive and stay after him and hopefully we can cross paths. I'd love to at least lay eyes on him. I worked the last two days and I wasn't able to get out despite Chubbs being active. So I, now I'm at the beginning of a six day stretch. Hopefully I can uh, get him on the ground. Hundred and thirty miles to the southwest, Owen Riegler is still trying to fill his first tag of the season. All right, we're back at it. We finally got past the two and a half days of drizzling rain. We're back after that split G2 buck. He hasn't been on camera in I don't know five or six days at least, so. Of course, you start wondering, you know, is he dead? Did somebody else shoot him and this and that? But, you know, most of the time they're still alive. They're just not walking in front of your cameras. So that's not gonna deter us until we hear different or we don't get a picture for a long time. But that Wolverine buck, he has been in here pretty active too at night. But I've had a lot of other bucks that have daylighted just the last few days. And I mean like five o'clock, 5.30, not even anything close to dark so it's really starting to heat up this scrape right here is getting mauled you can see that's all tore up in the mud and then you can always tell when the rut's ready to kick off by my 3d course when it starts getting mutilated that's a good sign the antelope his head was ripped off today and the white tail he was destroyed like tnt got him but we got greens on this side we got rye here corn on this side and we're trying to get them to go back and forth in front of the tree stand here so let's hope the split g2 buck does that one of the bucks I know. He, he does have some age on him. I think he's at least five, if not six. Pretty cool buck. He's kind of snuck up on us there with this wind. He was just all of a sudden, he was just standing right there. But great encounter though.
as the bucks work their way out of sight. Back on his home farm, Mike Reed hopes to create a little action of his own. Dude, that's, who is that? That's got to be Chubbs, right? They are going crazy back there. There, 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 there. What deer is that? It's Chubbs. It's Chubbs. He's walking Chubbs off. Dude, the two shooters. I'm at a loss for words. Um, what an experience. It all started with this two-year-old eight and this three-year-old 10 coming down this trail that's on that ridge. And that's one of the movement patterns we're hunting here. There's a real heavy trail and they popped through that ditch right here. And that three-year-old's a pretty deer, got a lot of pictures of him and uh, he was working a scrape and he looked back onto this little knob and when we first got here i was telling rye i think when when chubbs is not bedding in the bowl in the alfalfa he beds on this little knob on the back side of the bean and that's why he's always on this camera right here like relatively close to daylight or right right before legal shooting ends lately that 10 point looked that direction onto the hill at one point he stopped and he looked like he saw a deer and I was like there's got to be a buck over there and then he got on the trail and looked down the trail towards that scrape and he started bristling up I was like I could barely see the scrape down there but I could see that there was a good buck and then that was the six by five once I got a good look at the six by five I decided I was going to shoot him and uh, he started walking up the trail here the, t the th young deer came up the trail and the six by five went in the woods where the three the three-year-old came out and he was tearing up the same little tree and then he looked over and i was like he's staring at that buck there's a buck there and all of a sudden it broke out in a big fight and it went on for a good 30 40 seconds probably they were just pushing each other and clashing together and i ended up seeing that it was chubbs and he beat chubbs and chubbs walked up the hill and then went off Six by five sat here for a while. There's a doe down there. I don't know if Chubbs was bedded with that doe or if that doe was just, you know, bedded in the area. And she went up to the bean field. Crazy, I see both bucks. They clash it out. He beats Chubbs. Oh man, what a crazy experience. Encounter number one with, with both shooters. So, pretty awesome night. We've, we're down to our last 15 minutes, so we'll see if anything else shows up.
Following the epic showdown, the morning of October 30th finds Jared Mills on stand with intentions of filling a buck tag. morning nice and chilly probably low 40s I'm excited because this is my first actual morning hunt of the year and I'm not just messing around trying to kill a doe somewhere we're right here it's go time try to kill a buck so Ethan and I snuck in here and hung this set actually started off once it got light with a little rattling sequence and I just had a three or four year old buck that was a bunch of pictures of walk across this little dam up here. It's a really cool spot. We got, this is a pretty thick farm, but we got this long lane that I planted a couple different plots, one here and one up above. And historically, it's just been a really good spot to encounter good bucks. I've encountered mostly every deer that's on this farm in this spot. So hopefully the deer are moving. I know they moved really well yesterday. And uh, sometimes when that happens, there's a little bit of a lull, but hopefully I can get back-to-back -back good days. I'm going to plan on being out this morning and this afternoon, so it's go time. I'm, I'm excited to hopefully see some good pre-rut activity. I don't think we went more than probably you know 15 minutes at a time without seeing deer. It's pretty non-stop, just no shooters. Um, but good morning to be in the stand. We're gonna climb down, get this doe taken care of, and come up with a game plan for the afternoon. While Jared takes care of his doe, Owen heads out, hoping to continue his streak of mature buck encounters. Well, here we are back at it. October 30th. It's warmed up quite a bit. It's like high 50s right now. I think it's 60 actually, but at any rate, we're after that wide eight. I wanted to change the scenery, so we went to a different part of the farm. He's been down here pretty consistent, so I, I feel pretty good about seeing him. I thought about bringing the decoy, but opted against it because there's always a lot of does down here, so I thought I might mess our hunt up. Could help us, could hurt us. Oh, I thought I just heard, heard a deer sneeze. Let's get ready and sit in here for a while. As Owen fears the warm weather will shut things down, Jared Mills heads toward a primary doe feeding area on the river farm. All right, it's October 30th, and Ethan and I are settled in. This is our second time hunting this stand on the river farm. We had a pretty good hunt last time, and I want to come back to this spot just because we're at that time frame where the bucks are going to be checking out kind of the doe hot spots and there's been so many does in this spot I mean basically from the summer all the way through nice clover out in front of us and we did some TSI 
in the timber here and I think it's really helped the bedding multiple hunts here the deer have already been in the plot we were trying to sneak in there's a fawn and we got in here clean let it work off got up the tree and while we're setting up more does and fawns fouled out so I know they're bedding close to the spot and that makes me want to target it right now with the bucks starting to be on the move a little bit more obviously it's tonight the targets are Dak and Marino probably a little more likely to see Dak in this spot and just in general he's just more active on this property than Marino is but you just never know we're getting to be that that time of year hey what deer is that it's a solid buck I can't tell what deer it is. He's gonna hit our wind if he keeps going that way. You see him? I saw a deer go into that tall grass. I wonder if he's with a doe. He's looking back now. He heard you. Do you look into our left? He's looking like into the, he's looking straight down the road. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, he's going back to the right. See what the other deer was, if it was a doe or a small buck. He kind of was trotting up that lane when I stopped him. There's another deer on that lane. Man, that's a big eight. Which big eight? Your big eight. Dude, he's a stud. That eight pointer's going right into him. He's running right at Dad. He's running at him? Or he's running like in the CRP. Yeah, he's walking up to the pal. He's walking. He's quite a ways past Dak. I got him both in frame right now. Yeah, and Dak's back where we first saw him. Following that doe now. Scratch us back. Looks good there. Man, what a night. That's what we've been waiting for right there. That late October pre rut activity. I mean, we saw. Well, really all day we saw a lot of bucks. I think we were just talking uh, 10 bucks total today. And uh, six of them tonight, including Dak, of course. That was uh, the first sighting of Dak, and we watched him for probably off and on about an hour. I didn't get too aggressive on the calling. I grunted early and turned him when he was heading away from us. Um, but it was clear he was preoccupied, and I believe he had a doe pretty much all night. We didn't see her the whole night but he get lost in those willows so easily. So I didn't get too aggressive with the calls for that reason and also it, our wind started getting a little iffy at times. And so I didn't, you know, I, I thought about snort wheezing, I thought about rattling. I just figured it'd be better to, to let him do what he's gonna do 
and not bust us by coming into a call and then winding us. I don't know why the wind was swirling, it just died down to nothing. It was pretty variable, so that was the reason I chose not to call more to him. Uh, but it's cool to watch him out there just kind of keeping other deer away, following that doe around. Um, they didn't cover a ton of ground all night, it just kind of went back and forth, back and forth. Three or four of the bucks that we saw seemed to not have does, but be following does, or at least checking out a doe. So we know we're, we're at that time of year, um, but that is definitely the hunt that I was waiting on. Um, I won't be able to hunt tomorrow night, although conditions look really, really good, but we're gonna try to get back in the morning. I need to think about where I wanna go, uh, so I'll, I'll think on that tonight, and I'm, I'm pumped up for the morning hunt now. While Jared rides the rush of the season's first encounter with Dak, 130 miles to the southwest, Owen is patiently waiting for the big eight. Encounters the wide framed eight pointer for the first time this season, but well out of bow range. The eve of Halloween proved stellar for both Owen and Jared, providing each with heart pounding encounters. morning of October 31st finds Mike Reed on the river farm, sitting the property's best pinch hoping to find a cruising buck. It's Sunday, October 31st, and Ryan and I have made the move down to the River Bottom Farm. We are in one of my favorite spots on the whole farm. We are in the pinch set. I've had a lot of fun since here over the years. This is where I shot Prodigy and shot Gronk just across on the other side of the river. We have really great conditions today. It's nice and cool, mid 40s, super high pressure. It's on the rise, about 45 degrees or so. And we've been covered up in deer all morning. We've tried to do the interview multiple times. We've had deer bedded, came in and bed under us at 40 yards. We still have a fawn over here at 50, 60 yards. We just had a couple bucks come cruise by. One was a nice two and a half year old and a, a more mature buck that looked to be at least four and a half uh, came by. I wanted to give the home farm a little break. The mornings have been pretty slow over there and I've been contemplating how much my morning sits affect my afternoon sits. Chubbs has been way more active in the afternoon and so I thought I'd come spend a morning elsewhere. And I actually had dinner with Jared last night and he told me that he saw Dak out in the willows. So it is cool to have our first encounter with him this year and know that he's, you know, daylight active. Plenty of other good bucks around and I'm gonna sit back and enjoy the morning. A young nine-pointer with a bright future is the highlight of Mike's morning. Deer movement is steady, but Mike does not see either of the farm's primary targets. 120 miles to the southwest, Owen Riegler is gearing up for the afternoon hunt. All right, here we are, Halloween evening. We're back at the new farm. 
hoping to see that sticker spot, but really who knows what might be in here. There's a lot of good area around this farm, and this is the first year running cameras in here, so we could definitely see a surprise buck. We had some action just getting in here. There was We seen two or three bucks just in this timber right here. One doe caught us moving, getting in, so yeah, we'll have to see if she comes back looking for us like those does did the other night. But we, we got an awful nice evening. I'm looking for a pretty good hunt. We haven't been in here in about two weeks, and we had a good hunt when we hunted it the one time, so I'll be surprised if we don't see some good action. Let's set in here a few hours, see how it goes. You see this doe standing here looking at you. Another one coming up on the creek. It's about five o'clock guys. We still got a little buck right here. A couple of does out in the food plot. It's looked like November 10th since we got here. There's been bucks chasing does all over in here. I'll be really surprised if we don't see a mature buck tonight. I'm counting on it, planning on it, preparing myself mentally for it. Down right there. We were we were just talking about we can't believe he didn't spin around. I rattled. Snort wheezed. We were talking about it and all of a sudden Joe goes, here he comes right down the edge. He went up and looped around. Can't get him much closer than that. He knew where that rattling came from. Oh, that got me a little worked up. My my knees are shaking. Awesome. Man, I, I almost forced one through there because I had a little hole to shoot through. I'm at full draw. I'm like, nah, just wait. He's going to clear that. Oh, man. Got a 
had a nice little adrenaline rush, and that's awesome, right down the edge. Probably right in the creek, if I had to guess. There he is. Oh yeah, there he is on that side. Sure enough, didn't go far. <laughs> We're about almost three quarters of a mile from where we encountered him the first time, but I knew he'd been over here before, so I didn't think it was a long shot to see him. And sure enough, he was in here. I said it today, I said round two for stickers. He won the first one, but round two's my round. All right, guys, we got him out here in the daylight where you could get a little better look at him. Kind of talk about our, our strategy for him. The hunt really started, I guess, this spring. As I've mentioned before, that was a new farm. And the landowner, he was nice enough to give me the trail pictures from 2020. So this buck was one of those in 2020 that uh, identified as a mature buck. He was actually a little bit bigger last year. He had more kickers and stickers. He was a little bigger. I don't know how old he is, if he was on his way downhill or he just had kind of a bad growing year. The rest of the deer have done really well this year. so. Kind of wonder if he just had a, a down year for whatever reason. Maybe he was in bad shape coming out of the road or something. But at any rate, we knew he was a deer we wanted to target. So we started setting up that farm and we knew we needed food in there. You know, for this time of year, if you got the food, you've got the does and then you've got these kind of bucks. So ended up being just a fantastic hunt. You guys saw it. He walked out there about 42 yards first and I was gonna take that shot, I pulled back the full draw on him. Just about the time I started to settle the pin in, he turned to walk away and of course it was a terrible shot angle, so I just let him walk. Then he got he got around the corn where he couldn't see us, which was what I wanted, because that tree wasn't, it didn't have a lot of cover in it, but once he got up there, you know, we hit the horns and snort wheezed at him and grunted a couple times and he didn't respond, he didn't come charging right in like we thought he would, being a mature buck in there, but you saw it, he walked right down the path we walked in, so just a, that's another tip too, is those mowed, mowed paths and keep your boots sprayed down. Makes a big difference as far as him picking up your ground sand. He never had a clue we were there, but walked basically to the, to the base of the tree. Just a cool buck, and the best part is, I've still got a tag, so we get to keep hunting, but just uh, fortunate to have an opportunity any day I get to spend out there in the outdoors is just a win for sure whether you get a deer or not. And the next call I'm going to make will be to my dad to let him know I got a, got a buck. Same thing I've been doing, well, I don't know, the last 30 years or so. I've been, I guess I've been bow hunting about 35 years and I always call my dad and let him know I got one. So he introduced me to it and got me in the outdoors at a young age. So. Always got to give thanks, grandpas and moms, dads, uncles, everybody that introduced us. Don't forget to thank them. are going to be checking out kind of the doe hot spots and there's been so many does in this spot. You see them? Man, what a night. That's what we've been waiting for right there, that late October pre-rut activity. I mean, we saw, well, really all day we saw a lot of bucks. I think we were just talking uh, 10 bucks total today and uh, six of them tonight, including Dak, of course. He's walking up the trail. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely him. Crazy, I see both bucks. They clash it out, he beats jobs, oh man. You can always tell when the rut's ready to kick off by my 3D course. When it starts getting mutilated, that's a good sign. The antelope, his head was ripped off today, and the whitetail, he was destroyed like TNT got him. 
The last days of October again proved magical. Mornings are spent scanning the timber in hopes of catching a flicker of movement, and afternoons are spent in likely doe feeding areas. This is the recipe for the October pre-rut. While the last days of the month can serve up some of the season's best hunting, we are confident that even better days lie ahead. That's all that stands between us and our favorite month. As the clock strikes midnight, we will officially be chasing November.